In this video, we're going to take a look at number 12, Instances, Methods, Properties. All right, so we've taught, we've learned about types and how they're similar to types of things in the real world. So in the real world, you have many physical instances of different types. For example, a car, there's various types of cars. You have different instances of cars. Each car is different, has its own unique qualities. For a type city, each instance of a city has a different name, population, location, landmarks. The type defines and describes the properties and behaviors of a particular kind of thing. But each concrete example, each car, each city is a separate independent instance of the type. So imagine you have two cars, same make and model, built in the same year. One is speeding down the highway on a trip, the other is out of gas by the side of the road. Same type, but different instances. Same thing with cities. The location of each city will be different. A landmark in one might draw lots of tourists, but a landmark in another might be in disrepair and get few visitors. Both are cities, but each individual city can be very different from the next. So in programming, you create and use different instances of a given type. Each instance has its own set of property values, and each instance can perform behavior independent of other instances. Let's take a look at that in code. We've already worked with a variety of types, such as string. An individual string value like hello is called an instance of that type. So string is the type, hello is an instance of a string. We've created ints and strings already for quite some time. Now, each value we make is an instance of that type. So the constant hello and a different hello are two string instances that happen to hold the same data. So this constant here is an instance of a string, and this is a different instance of a string. We've also performed a few operations on instances. We've done a number of things with them. So now, the next, let's talk about creating an instance. When we've created an instance, we type a literal value into the code. So, except for things like date, where you create a value holding the current time. So, for example, here we import foundation in order to reference a date. We say date right now equals date open close parenthesis. So the date looks like a function, but there's a big difference. One, it's a type in name instead of a name beginning with a lowercase letter. So notice that it's an uppercase letter and this is the actual type. This is an initializer. You use an initializer to create a new instance of a particular type. There are only a few types like string, bool, and int that you create by using literals. Every, but every type has at least one initializer. In fact, these literals have an initializer. For example, you could say let empty string equals string and to initialize it. Then it says we often want to provide more information when you create an instance. So many types have initializers with parameters to let you do this. For example, with date, let one hour later equals date, time interval since now. So there's a parameter that you can pass in when you create a new date. This gives you a date that is the number of seconds from the current time. Initializers and functions are similar. They can have parameters or no parameters. Uh, you call them the same way, but you pass in the required argument values. There is a difference. You use the name of the type when calling an initializer, and an initializer returns a new instance of its type. So let's talk about some other things. Methods. Functions can be defined as part of a type. These functions are called instance methods or just methods. So string has many instance methods, which are common used for common operations. So here are two string instances. It's often useful to know if a string begins with another string. The method has prefix can answer this question. So the method is declared like this. Function has prefix, and you pass in the prefix, and it returns true or false. 
Instance methods are called by using a period after the instance. So we have introduction dot has prefix it was, and that returns true because it says it was. Introduction dot has prefix it wasn't, and that returns false. Same with alternate introduction has prefix it wasn't, it was, it wasn't, and those both return false. So here we are calling a method on the instance. We've called has prefix on introduction. And so you see the answers here. Um, it says, note, you don't need to pass in the value of introduction. The method is being performed by the instance assigned to introduction. So the value is already available to it. So we'll talk about this a little bit later. All right, let's see how we can use instant methods safely. Type safety still applies when you use instance methods. Has prefix is a string instance method, so you can't use it without an instance. For example, if I uncomment this line and I just call this method has prefix, it's going to throw an error. And the reason for that is it's there's nothing, it's not connected to a, an instance of a string. It's just all by itself, so it won't work. So I'll comment that back out. So um, you can't use an instance method on an instance of the wrong type. So you can only use it that are part of or members of a particular type. So for example, here's a number, let and here's an int. And if we uncomment this line and we say number dot has prefix, well, it throws an error. It says value of type int has no member has prefix. Because this method does not belong to this type. All right, let's look at properties. So we've talked about different types. We talked about a car and a city, and each one has a different name or has a different value for mileage. So in Swift, each instance has one or more pieces of information. These values are known as properties. So we want, sometimes it's good to know if a string contains any characters. There's a property is empty that answers that. The property is declared like this, and it's similar to a variable declaration. It's a method is a function built in to each instance of a type. A property is a constant or variable built into each instance of a type. So here we have a property is is empty is of type boolean. Now this is a marked as a var or variable because the property can change. The get in the braces indicates that you can only get the value. That means you can't set it. This is called read only. We'll talk more about this as we go, but these are really important principles that we're going to go through. So when we talk about properties, we call it by using a period after the instance. So we say let something, here's a string, and we say dot is empty, and it returns false. Here we say nothing dot is empty, and it returns true. So the same rules apply for type safety. You can't use a property without an instance, and you can only use properties that are part of that instance. Now, so far we have some that don't have very many properties because it's real, they store real simple information. We'll talk about more complicated types later. All right, so next, properties versus methods. So the big question, what's the difference between a method and a property? When would you use each one? So the difference between a method and a property is similar to the difference between a function and a variable or constant. So a variable is useful for referring to a value. Similarly, a property provides a way to get or set a value that's part of an instance. Each instance can have a different value for that property. A function is useful for providing behavior that can be repeated. A method works in the same way, providing behavior specific to that instance. Arguments, if you work uh, if the work you want to perform needs extra information, then it must be a method, since you can't pass arguments to a property. That means has prefix must be a method because you need to pass in the prefix you're testing for. Also, if work has side effects, things that happen that aren't related to the return value, then it's a method. For example, string has a method remove all, which empties the string. So we know this is a method because when you call this method, it does something to the string. If it were a property, it would return a value of whatever that property is. 
in this case, it's we know that it's a method because it does something to the string. So properties are forgetting values from an instance, and then you can also set them. We'll talk about that. Properties don't do anything else. So when you build an app, almost all the code you write is a form of instance methods or properties on types. And there's often types that you create. And you'll have all sorts of things working together. All right, let's go next. So we've talked about APIs, the application programming interface, when we looked at BoogieBot. The instance methods and properties of a string are the API of the string. So the question is, how do you find out? How do you know what the uh, API of a given type is? Well, we've seen that when you do autocomplete and you start typing, you can see the reference of the potential properties and or methods available to you. So a lot of these may not make sense, that's okay, we'll learn how to figure that out. So let's check out autocomplete. Let's practice here. So we're going to start by typing example and then press dot. And then after that, we'll say is. And notice how we have all these. These are different values. So notice this letter V and letter M. That means it returns a value, and this is a method. So this means this is a property. Is empty is a property. Unicode scalars is a property. Very good. See how that works? Then if I back up and let's say has prefix, there's only the one, and that is a method that returns a value of, of a true or false. Okay. Now there's, what about documentation? So a lot of the times we need to know what does something do? We need to figure out where to find things in the documentation. So this is really important. And one way to do that is to option click on a type, method, or property, and it will show you the information. So let's click. And if I press option and click, then it brings up all this documentation. And I can go through and I can read it. And it tells me a lot about what that even shows examples. What about has suffix? Let's look at that. Pretty cool. Now let's look at another way to look at it. Quick help. So to access quick help, you need to show the utilities area, which is currently hidden. And so to access that, we can click this button here to hide or show utilities. So now we're showing utilities. And then over here, this option is the quick help. Now, notice where the cursor is. Right now, it's in the has prefix. And look, there's the same information that we had from the option clicking. Now, let's say if I click around, if I click at the end of a line, for example, there's no, there's no help. If I click on this constant, it tells me a little bit about it, but there's nothing else about it until I click into this particular method. Awesome. Now read the fine manual. So we have the popover and the quick help, and that gives us a little bit of information. But if you want to get all of the documentation, which describes everything about it, we can go to the link at the bottom of the quick help, or you can uh, access directly by clicking the search documentation from the quick help menu or you can also access it by going window documentation and api reference now from here we can we can access things like string and it brings up all the documentation about string with lots of examples and all the methods and properties and how to use it now Documentation covers a lot. So you don't have to read everything, but it's important to know where to find it when you need it. All right, let's look at classes and structs. So when you look at APIs in the documentation, you'll see the type declaration like for string, it says struct string. 
And then maybe when you're looking at other frameworks, you'll come across type declarations that say class UI color, for example. So you'll work with both instances of structure, structs, which is short for structures, and classes. So both provide a way to define a type in Swift. They're very similar. You have instances, you have instances that are created with initializer, and both can have methods and properties. So when you create or use an instance, you write the same Swift code whether a type is a struct or a class. So let's take a look about and learn more about why we use methods and properties. So we've talked about some differences in methods and properties and each instance of a particular type has some values you can access and some has behavior. So that helps us break down the complexity of a large program by putting related pieces of information, properties, and work to be done methods together in a single self-contained package an instance. For example, the string you have has prefix as a function that takes one string and tests another string with prefix to check for. So for example, it has prefix and then a string and then a check. This kind of function is called a top level function because it isn't contained in anything else. So far, all the functions we've written have been top level functions. Now, there are some advantages of using methods and properties over top-level functions and variables. Putting the capabilities of a type together with the type itself makes the code easier to understand. Autocompletion works much better. So, autocompletion only supplies the methods that can apply at the point you're typing. If all methods were top-level functions, then whenever you started typing, every function in the system would show up. The documentation is easier to organize and find. So, We've talked about how a function hides complexity but makes it easier to use. And so we have methods of a, in an instance, there's complexity behind the instance giving you the answer. When you use strings, you just need to call the methods and properties to get the job done. The string type takes care of all the details. Let's see what we've talked about so far. So we've learned that types are more than just a string or int, but each can have additional capabilities. Types can have a property it can, that allow instances to set their own values. It can have instance methods, which are functions defined as part of a type. And you can look in documentation to find all the methods and properties available. And uh, even things like strings have a lot of methods and properties. All right, now look for the next video to review the exercises.